Hey everyone, just wanted to let y'all know that my physical copy of my graphic novel is now available to purchase on Amazon. Uh, there's also the ebook form, uh, but it uh, it's finally done. I'm excited. Finally got the physical copy ready to go. Uh, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave the links down in the descriptions, alright? Other than that, I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. And welcome back to Wicked Art, it's Wicked here, and it's our Digital Wednesday, and today we're going to talk about how to put lightning into a scene as an effect in Photoshop. Now the reason why I'm showing you this picture right here in particular is I drew an image of Storm from the new run of the Rise and Powers of X slash Fall of X series. Storm is one of my top five all favorite comic book character ever and I wanted to show this sketch first to show that I did draw it first <laughs> okay so I just drew it brought it into Photoshop and then I have done this where I have inked it in and everything else so if you want to you can take a screenshot of this right now and then what you can do is just go to file go to open or go to place embedded and just bring it in to the scene and you can trace over it um, and use it to follow along uh, with this video. So we're going to do storm and lightning effects today, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to get rid of this layer right here in particular, okay? Uh, I just need to pull up a quick um, reference of her colors so that I have something to use as a reference with it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to add a new layer. I'm going to put that underneath and I'm just going to call that color. Alright, and then I'm going to come back up to my line layer. We're just going to simply pick our magnetic, or not our magnetic, but our magic wand tool and I am just going to select around and what that'll do is it'll give me complete coverage and I'll select the inverse so that I can color inside alright and then the next thing I'm going to do is come back down here to color and I'm going to put a mask on it by hitting this mask button down here okay so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to start with her outfit so most of it is black but I don't want it to be pitch black. Okay, so I'm going to do kind of this, kind of like a mini gray-ish black color, and let's see what that looks like. And as we color that in, that might be a little, let's go up here into the blue. And we'll get more of a color like that. Okay, so as you can see, adding that mask allows me to not go outside of the lines. And I can just fill that in. And you can adjust your brush size with the bracket keys. Uh, just so that you can change sizes as needed as you're coloring it in. And once we're done doing that, it's kind of like a two for one. I know our main focus is the lightning, but that would be all of like a, you know, three second video. So I figure you can learn how to, you know, color in a character as well. And then just add this cool lightning effect to the background. Okay, so we color that in there. Now, like I said, the rest of her suit is also black so uh, the other thing I need to do that I forgot is let's draw in a fingernail just because she has almost like the uh, Pokemon glove in here. Just add a few extra lines. I'm going to add in a 
some shadow too right here some inking and then we for I forgot but uh, just add in a few little lines in here but I forgot to do that over here so let's put gloves Right here with some fingernails right there. Okay, so we come back to the color. Use Alt and hold that down. You can repick the color you were working on. And again, we can continue on. So you can see the trim that I have is more of a gold color so we're going to get to that later so we're just going to fill in everything black first that needs to be black and you can just color that in um, you could just kind of hand select areas uh, to kind of fill in but me personally I like to kind of paint everything um, I just feel like it makes it more control on my part but everything like all this too this is not her her skin on her jacket fold over it's actually part of her suit and again her knuckles guards are gold as well so we're gonna leave those alone so we'll just fill those in and continue around the image see it's kind of going outside the line right there that's just because it was such a tight squeeze it wasn't able to mask that off but that's fine that's not going to mess up anything and again we'll just finish filling in the rest of the black here That'll just leave us with this outside region and the other arm. Okay, so we'll come up and hit this side of the jacket. It's okay if you come over and some go over in certain spots because you're just going to color it over with something different. Alright, so let's come in and fill in the jacket. And I believe the other thing I forgot was her knuckle guards here. So we can add those in real quick. Nothing fancy, just here, circle there. A uh, little bit of a circle here. I'm just kind of thicken that up. Again, another circle guard, and then I'll just erase out. And then we'll add one more right here at the top. And it doesn't really matter how it looks too much, because our main goal is, like I said, then learning how to do the lighting. Okay, so we just come in. don't want to color that in, that's the skin. And that takes care of that. Make sure everything's colored in good and we have our black. So the next is going to be our kind of uh, yellow uh, yellow gold color here almost creeping down into orange. Okay, and we're going to come in here on um, the edges. And we'll just 
just fill those in. Get that lightning bolt too. And this is where you can start, you know, being a little careful because, like, see how I kind of went over the edge? You want to make sure that you don't go over the areas that you're coloring. Now, this yellow, to me, is a little on the bright side, so I'm going to drop down. And we're going to give it more of a darker tint. Now she has a gold band, or several gold bands, but I'm just doing the one because I'd like to show a little bit of her neck from the angle. And we just fill in the rest of that. It looks like I missed a spot. Right down here with the black. And again, I'm just using the Alt key. to pick a previous color. Again, if you accidentally go over, just hit the Alt key, hit that previous color, and just fill it in. Now again, the knuckle guards are also gold. So it's essentially a black and gold outfit with little tiny variations. I think she's got some red on her collar. But for the most part, it's just all black and gold. Looks like I forgot to fill this in, too. Okay, and she's got the gold uh, pauldrons on her shoulder. Or you can just call them shoulder guards, whatever. That's technically a pauldron. As well as a hint of it right here on the side. Okay, we're going to come over here and fill that in gold. Same thing with the knuckle guards over here. And that should do it for that. Now we do have red, but I'm going to use a little bit of a darker red. That red right there. Now her lightning bolt earrings are going to be gold. I want to make sure I get this red right back there. Now, we can work on her skin tone. So I'm going to come down here into this kind of like a yellowish-orange area. And we're going to find her skin tone. So let's find the right color for that. So if you're curious about that color, I can just double click on this. You're going to put your R at 95, G at 73, and B at 43. And we're just going to fill in all of her skin tone with that color. Now, I am going to leave the eyes alone because we're going to do a slight like glow effect on that. Uh, just to show that she is using her powers. And we 
may use uh, what's called a stroke where it gives it kind of an outline so we may give it like a white outline just depends on how the background turns out whether I'm going to do that or not but we'll do that when we get there so let me just color that in just taking my time like I said I like to be in control of everything that's going on I don't like just clicking and paint bucketing everything because sometimes it doesn't do it right but that is just a personal preference of mine Again, just getting the rest of the skin tone. And this is also her skin down here. Kind of has like a split on the side of her outfit. We have her stomach as well. Just get the skin over here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, as far as the fingernails go, I'm just going to give her black fingernails. Um, I'm sure they're probably, you could change them, make them whatever you want, but we're just going to give her the black just so that it matches with her outfit. And then for the lips, I'm going to use the same skin tone. So I'm just going to pick Alt on there. Make sure I fill in all those spots. Okay, and then I'm going to drop down just a little bit. And fill that in. And then we'll go a little bit darker. top okay so now we just have her white hair okay so that's simple enough and that's why I kind of have that gray background so that stands out but we're going to color that in Again, you can adjust your brush size so that you don't go over. Again, I'm going to get eyebrows. And I'm going to fill in the hair at least closest to the skin with a smaller brush size just so I can control it and make sure that I don't go over and get that little bit of the side here and I can increase my brush size and come through and get the rest I'm going to be very careful around the ear once I get back down to this area I'm going to shrink my brush size back down get all these spots around the ear and the pauldron and then again down here under the arm I'm going to stick with a small brush size just to get the parts that are close to the body so like stuff like that doesn't happen. So let's just fill in the rest with a larger brush size. Boom. Got ourselves a storm 
basic layout. Okay, now I'm gonna come over here to my mask and I'm gonna hit Command on the Mac. It's by Control on a PC. I'll come and hit the new layer button, and we're gonna call this Shadows. All right, now I'm gonna hit another mask. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down to 50%. We're just gonna do a cell shading. I'm gonna pick black. And what this will allow us to do is watch. I can take this now and I can just click on her and see how that fills her in black. You can do it this way or you can just kind of hand paint it. I'm going to do it this way just because I like using the negative or subtracting out and just erasing. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to come down here and pick our eraser. I can just erase out or bring back by coloring any of the shadows that I don't want in the image. And again, this gives me better control over kind of seeing like how much light I want exposed on the body. That way we can get that effect of the lightning kind of reflecting that area. Okay, and again, with the skin, I'm going to get as close to that edge with leaving some shadow so that we have that overlap on the body. So you can see how that kind of helps define the leg. Now I'm going to kind of adjust. I'm going to come back and paint. Just keeping it on black. Bring that a little bit closer like that. Okay, same thing with the thigh here. Our leg is kind of back, so we still have exposure. And I'm going to use the shape of this jacket overhang. Since I have that little overlap of muscle right here on the inner thigh, I am going to leave that there, but probably adjust it a little bit. Okay, so I'll probably make that a little bit bigger for the overhang right in there. Okay. So this is what we're looking like so far. Again, we have the legs forward to allow this to be unblocked. But I do want to give some light to this area. Okay. Also want to hit up the edges on this chain. And expose it to some light. Okay. Now, same with the hair on this side, right? We're going to have our exposure. To what's going on so we're not going to have like a ton of uh, visible light all the way down it'll just come to a certain point that way we show a little bit of some under shadow to the hair so it's not all just one flat color
so that way just a tiny bit of it is exposed. So I'm going to adjust it now and kind of flow down the hair like that and just expose about that much of it. Okay, I can go ahead and I can do the same thing on this side. So what I'm using is just my eraser to just re-expose the color that I already have. Okay, I can do a little bit on the edge right here. And probably just a tad bit right there. Okay, and then for the hair itself, we're, you know, the lightning strike on where it's going to be, so we're just going to kind of do this upper edge here. And just erase all that out. Okay, so we're going to take that around. And again, once you're done erasing out an area, you can uh, repaint back in things like if it's not, you know, looking exactly how you want. Like little tiny areas that are exposed that don't need to be, um, you know, any bit of shadow that you want still to have shadow. That's what you're ex you're exposing in, right? So I could do other things like gaining back the shape of the hair a little bit just to give it some texture on there um, also exposing a little bit of this back area to a point and kind of adjusting from there you know how much is being seen okay so next thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna start with the hand here so I'm just gonna kind of erase out bits of the glow as well as the finger it just depends again how much you want exposed also want to expose the uh, gov guard, uh, knuckle guards and put some light on there And then leave that little bit of shadow from the fold over on the uh, sleeve from the jacket. So again, we're just kind of exposing the light is what we're doing. Okay. So let's come in here. And we'll make up these shapes coming in. Again, just kind of exposing the upper area. It might come down a little bit more. Again, just shedding light in areas on the jacket. So you can see how it's starting to slowly but surely expose the things that we need. Let's do the spikes on the pauldron. And then once we're done with that, we can put in the actual uh, exposed area of the pauldron. Okay, and then we'll do like this upper edge 
right here. And again, what that does is it gives shape and form to the thing that we're working on. Okay. Now, when it comes to the face, it's just, again, just depends on how much is being exposed, uh, what you want to show. So, like, I know for here, I want a little bit of shadow from the hair along the edge. Up there at the top. I also know that the upper portion of the nose is going to be exposed, as well as the top of the eyelid here. So again, I'm just kind of shaping the face, and I can bring back anything that I need, and we get this kind of upper part of the nose here. I'm going to leave that lower portion in shadow. Again, I can probably expose a tiny bit of the cheek on this side. Again, just to give me some face shape, I can go ahead and we can expose out the eye over here. Okay. And again, I just want a small portion, because the way the light's hitting, I just want a small portion exposed under the nose. And again, we're just using the shape of the face to help us build out what it is we want to see in the image. Okay, so like even spots here under the eye. Can help me build out my shape. How much is exposed on the forehead? Let's kind of bring that back and then we want that to really kind of touch right in there. Okay, so again, it's always nice to zoom out and see what you got so I can leave that kind of like that uh, except we want the roundness of the chin to go this way against the lighting and then we're going to have some exposure under the neck not a lot just some okay so again just taking it a step at a time and seeing what you want exposed so we want this side of the jacket here Right. And then we're going to come and leave a little shadow under the pauldron, just close to the edge. And then again, using my kind of uh, ink shapes to expose the rest of this portion of the jacket. So I'm just erasing that out. And again, I tend to go for things that look cool um, as opposed to what's 100% light accurate. So where well, you may look at it and go, well, that's not how that would look. I mean, it's true. It may not look that way. But sometimes I just choose things based off of what looks the best as opposed to what's accurate. Just because I'm trying to get my viewers' attention. Right? So, like right here in the chest, I want this area here to be exposed. So, I'm just going to erase that out. So you can see how I'm trying to follow the shape and form of the body. Because see, I have my jacket here that's going to cast shadow over. But then I'm going to have some 
light exposed right down in here And then once we clear out most of that, we can take a step back and we can look at it and go, well, that doesn't look right. Let's do this. So like right in here, you know, I want a little bit of shadow still left right there. Um, you know, this kind of exposure here, I still want some shadow from the shape. And then we're going to get a ever so slight bit of exposure right in here just to see what it looks like if we don't like it we can just always add it back so let's see let's bring back a little bit here and some there so now we have at least a little bit of light shining in there okay now as far as the stomach goes not a whole lot could probably expose the tiniest bit of area. Just so it's not super dark down in there. All right? Okay, so now we have most of this side done. And here's the tricky part where we have to pick and choose kind of where the light's going to be hitting on this side of the face or not just the face but the image so like I want probably a little bit of exposure on the upper edges right here but not too much same thing with the jacket edge I'm just gonna expose a little bit of the jacket edge just a little bit okay same thing here we want Because our jacket is draped over, we want just a little bit exposed here. Just a tiny bit, not a lot. We'll just erase that out, and then we'll take a step back and look at it and see if it fits with what we're doing. Yeah, for the most part, that looks good. Okay, now again, we're going to come in here and we're going to expose the edges of our pauldron spikes. But here's the part we have to look again how much light is being exposed jacket the heads blocking all that so you know this is where you can kind of decide you know what's going to look cool with doing this so i'm going to come in here and just reveal a little bit of the top area of the pauldron Okay. Now I'm noticing I'm gonna come back here to color, but I'm noticing I miss a few spots, so I gotta fill those back in. But I'll just switch back to the shadows, go back to black, and we're back on here. So now I can kind of do a little bit of the pauldron edge, like that. Okay, and then it's again. With this part, how much is being exposed and what's being blocked. So we're going to do a little bit here. And just erase that out. can 
fill in a little bit there. So let's see what that looks like. There we go, a nice little top bit. All right, and then same thing here, just a little bit of exposure at this top end, like that. And then the same thing with the sleeve, just exposing just enough to give it shape and form. So I'm leaving a little bit of shadow there by the sleeve. Bringing that down. So our hand is forward, so we're going to have a little bit more exposure on here than we would on the other areas. Again, you can always take a step back and see how it's looking. Okay. And then we're going to come in here. And we're going to expose these parts that are going to be highest. Um, you know, to the light that's coming in. So same thing here with the fingers. Leave a little bit of shadow there. And then again on the fingers. So with here, we're going to kind of take the shape Of our finger and use that to help us erase out what's visible and then kind of use the edge there on the uh, knuckle guard again and kind of come down use the edge on the knuckle guard And again, okay, and then I can fill back in any areas that I feel need that shadow trim. So these roundness coming from the knuckle guards themselves would be an area that I would refill. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have our storm set up, right? So now we get to the part with the lightning. Okay. Now there's two ways to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lightning behind. So in case we mess up, anything like that. But I'm going to go to effects, inner glow. I just have white the setting that chokes all the way up to 100 it's on lighten size is 34 the range 100 jitter 23 and just hit OK and while I'm at it I'm gonna call this lightning 1 okay and then I'm gonna go to effects and we're gonna go to outer glow and we're going to do a uh, blue tone for the glow of our lightning. So let's do more along these lines and we'll do like up in there. Okay. Now the first thing you can do is you could go online and just view lightning bolts, right? You can just find a lightning bolt thing, stick it in there, boom, you put it in. You want to make sure you pick white. Right? And then you can come in here go to your outer glow and you can adjust the size of the spread itself and do you know whatever from there so like that's an option you know you can come in here and just put lightning effects all in the in, into the the scene itself now me personally I mean that's cool and everything. Let's just go back. But I would prefer to, you know, hand draw them myself. So I'm gonna go to my hard round brush, just regular basic brush, right? 
and then you can come in here uh, depending on the size and you can start drawing your lightning out yourself right so key thing here is adjusting the size the size is going to determine that glow that comes off of there so that can be as little or as much as you want the spread is how much that see that big wide outer line is you don't want to spread that too much but this you can adjust however you want to be in there and again that's going to be based off of you and your personal preference and how you want things to look if you want to have a few arcing spots but again because I have it behind her I can draw however I want with this lining and have that you know play whatever role that I want it to play okay so that doesn't look like too much so what we can do now is we can add a new layer above that and we just call this clouds now this one I do use a lot uh, you can just come in here and go to I think Photoshop has a pack of these concept brushes um, they're called uh, Kyle's concept brushes but you can come down here to where it says clouds and you can find the uh, type of clouds that you want and test them out so I'm gonna do a lighter gray tone right and I can fill that in over the top of the lightning bolt just so that it looks like it's coming from that area coming out of it okay and then I can darken for these upper areas let's see I'm go a little darker and you can add a little bit of a dark come back and add some lighter color on top of it and again you can continue that trend just for that that front area okay just kind of play with it until you get the type that you want and then I can go behind the lightning add a new layer and just call it clouds too All right so I can kind of take this kind of a black We just fill that in. Now it's going to take a minute because I'm recording for that all to catch up. But you just fill your image in until you get enough in there to kind of make the lightning stand out. And I can go really black for this lower area just because it's farther away and then again just kind of work my way up over the top and as I work my way up let's kind of think of it like a like a gradient almost and you can mix inside of their you know, different colors of, of black. And we go a little bit lighter right down here just to give us some layers. Okay. 
And now what I can do is, if I wanted to kind of tone out some of it, I can just create a new layer, and we can switch to a gradient, and we can do, let's see what our blues look like. That way we kind of get like a, like a flash going. Alright, so I can do that there, and just do an overlay, and we can adjust the opacity. Just until we get to a point that, you know, that we like. So you can pick whatever color you want. Um, if I wanted to, let's see, we could switch it to our grays. Let's see what a black would look like. And then I can adjust the opacity again. Okay. And then I'm going to crop this image up just a little bit just to cut off that bottom area okay and then remember I told you about um, the eyes right so I can come above this layer and I'm gonna say I glow and I can go to effects and keep my settings the same. I don't need to change anything because it's exactly where I want it. Come up here and pick that white, maybe kind of a white blue. And we can zoom in on the eyes here. Make sure we switch back to our hard round brush. Shrink that down. Again, just kind of fill in the eyes there. And gives you a nice little glow effect. Now I can, because it's glowing too much, I can take the size down a little bit. Like that. Okay. Now another cool thing we can try, right? So let's say I want to take this line layer. I can go stroke. And that would work, but I have too much work on the inside there. So let's do this. I'm going to do command. Okay. And then I'm going to add a new layer under this gradient. I'm just going to call this outline I can go select inverse I'm going to choose this kind of a white blue right and then I can kind of go follow along the path right and get a really close outline the body if that's what you wanted to do you don't have to okay or we can take that same outline layer put it above and just switch it and call it highlights okay I'm gonna take that white blue and select that um, again we can put our mask over it. Come in and we can start putting in a highlight around the edges just to make it stand out some more. So as you back away from it 
it looks like the light is reflecting that lightning. So I'm just switching the color to more of a blue. Alright, so it adds a little bit of a glare. Again, we're just putting the highlights. that mask will keep us from going outside the line. And you don't want to go like uh, too over the top just because it'll It'll be too much. Now, I mean, you can. I mean, it's obviously it's your artwork. You can do with it what you want. Um, but like, I'll just be hitting up specific edges to make it stand out. You can look up references for lightning, like in like um, comic books. Um, you probably need to erase out some of that shadow in there. That arm. Uh, that'll help you get an understanding of like how thick. Like I said, I'm just showing you the basic. Um, I would probably make it more uh, intricate myself uh, just so again it can stand out as much as possible and we're probably going to need to take out a little bit on the edge here down in here. Again, and I'm just switching back to those highlight layers to get that effect on there. little glows here and there. Again, it doesn't have to be super crazy, just enough. Again, that it just stands out against the grain. And I usually don't put it on the skin. You can. Uh, you can experiment with that. But yeah, for the most part, that's how you can make lightning. Again, you can adjust thickness and things like that or whatever you want to do on your own. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, if you learned anything, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this or if you have suggestions for things that you want to learn, please let me know down in the comments. It really, really helps me guide this channel the way you want to see it. Other than that, thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and until next time, I'll see you in the next one, alright? Bye.